We are nearing the midpoint of Jen's season of The Bachelorette, and with this latest preview, I think we have a strong outline in place for what to expect for the rest of the season, including whether or not Jen's surprise visit from her ex Matt is going to see him joining the cast and disrupting all the established connections. So let's take a look at this preview and see what it has to offer, and as per usual, please, no posting any outright spoilers in the comment section below unless you can back it up with sleuth Thing, and a link to the full preview is in the description. Next week, Jen's past. I hope that you can see how much that you mean to me. Collides with her future. So Matt has arrived and he's all dolled up in his cute little rose ceremony tux and, I don't know, I get good vibes from this guy. I guess we'll see, but I think he's relatively genuine. Haven't seen a lick of his TikTok wiener dog videos, but I just get the feeling as if this guy does not know the world he stepped into. Like he's about to get overwhelmed by the production of it all. Maybe it's just the way he walked into that first meeting with Jesse Palmer looking around like, oh my goodness. And he yeah, it's always a little sus when someone becomes the bachelorette or something and then their ex shows up like, ah, now you're in love with her, now you want to fight for her. But I also know that production would have had to accommodate a lot to get this guy here and cause drama, so there's that too. Still doesn't change the fact that he's about to walk into a viper's nest of men. And this is probably one of the worst casts of men to walk into like this. Cause this is one of the most combative ready-to-fight group of men we've had in a long time, so grab your popcorn. My ex-boyfriend, Matt, he flew all the way here and he wants to join this journey. So he is here tonight. This decision will change everything. Will it, Jesse Palmer? Will it? I think this shot right here shows it won't. Now the preview threw this little clip of Jen and Matt hugging in here to get us thinking that this is her greeting him. Greeting him with a hug, which could mean she's happy to see him and wants him on the show. Or they're hugging because they've had a great chat and he's likely to get added to the season. But no, the most revealing part of this shot is actually this bench. The classic bachelor we need to talk before I kick you out bench. The bench they often go to at the end of a rose ceremony to talk about why things aren't working out. This is for sure Jen saying goodbye, and like we saw when Matt arrived, these two are amicable. Jen even said they had become friends, so this will just be a friendly exit buttoned with a hug. However, even if Jen is friendly with a guy and he's coming in genuine, that won't stop the other men from getting their shots in as we saw in the season preview. He wants to be with me and he wants to join this journey. Oh god, here we go. You stand no chance. You're part of the past. I think you need to go back to the past. So that will start next week's episode, and Matt will go home before things move into another week in New Zealand, which we'll see more of ahead. With her ex walking in, it's changing people's, people's hearts and minds. I have one of the biggest decisions that I've had to make yet, and I have to follow my own journey. Okay, so here we're seeing the one-on-ones for next week with those going to Grant and Jonathan. Both guys were due, and actually them being on these dates will help a little bit with some sleuthing later on. Otherwise, the voiceover for this section is blowing a lot of smoke, claiming guys have changed their hearts and minds, and Jen has a big decision ahead, which is all meant to get us wondering if Jen's ex is blowing the season up and staying, but nah, it's just your standard preview you misdirection. Moving on. You don't think it makes you look at me differently? I trust you. Lions don't concern themselves with the opinions of sheep. We are working our hardest to be here and for some guy who wandering his way back in, I'm living. All right, so here we have a sheepish group date coming up on top of more audio with Devin this time expressing how he's livid that some guy has wandered his way back into Jen's life. Sam M, however, trusts Jen and doesn't as Jen wonders look at her differently. That being said though, this moment is coming from the evening portion of next week's group date long after Matt has left. So the context here is being wildly twisted in order to make for a more dramatic preview. Who knows? 
knows the real reason Jen's saying this. Maybe it is about Matt, and that she'd even entertain the idea of bringing him back, despite eventually sending him away. And we know this is from the group date, as we've actually seen it before. Check out Jen's outfit, which we can match to this shot from the season preview that helped us figure out Jen's top eight, with Grant and Jonathan being missing as they're on the one-on-ones for the week. But actually, if we do the math, Jen's at nine men going into this group date, so one person is missing from this shot. Who is it, and why? Well, we'll talk about that after looking at this next section. Ah! What are you saying? I'm saying I don't think it's fair to the other guys. Okay, gonna pause right here at this moment with Austin. Now, the preview, once again, is trying to get us thinking that Austin is talking about Matt, and that Jen may be bringing Matt on the show is, quote, unfair to the guys, and so we've got a confrontation between him and Jen right here. But that is not what's happening. Check out Jen's strap right here. It's a match for her outfit from the evening portion of the group date. So, once again, this is happening long after Matt has already left. Yes! Yet, Austin is not seen in this shot. He can be seen sort of blurry in the background of this sheep moment, but he is gone right here. At the very end of the group date, where Jen is about to hand out this rose before they all head back to the hotel. So Austin is there at the beginning of the night portion of the group date and not the end, meaning this has to be a self-elimination. Austin saying it's not fair to the other guys is more likely him talking about his place on the show. Maybe he's realized his connection with Jen isn't strong, and so he's saying that him being there isn't fair to the other guys because he's just taking up time that someone else could use or wants. So he's gone, which will lead to what Jen's about to say up ahead. As much as I can see a future at the end of this, I also see a future where I end up alone. And there the preview ends, with Jen sending someone home at the group date, surely Austin, and wondering if she could end up alone at the end of this. A sentiment I believe she's saying because of Austin's self-elimination. After all, if he wasn't feeling it as much as Jen was, who's to say the other men aren't as well? Unlikely, but a normal fear to have on this show nonetheless. But let's now talk about the outlook of the whole season, as I think with this, we've got a pretty good grasp on it. So next week we'll start with Matt arriving at the road ceremony. The men will huff and puff, and with Sam and gone, the show is down to 11 men, plus now Matt. Matt will be sent away, then two are going home. Which is perfect, because two men are not seen in any more footage from the previews, and those men are John and Thomas. The latter of which will be devastated that they're no longer able to spend quality time confronting other men and ignoring Jen. A new week then begins, and we've got Grant and Jonathan with one-on-ones, and Austin goes goes home at the group date, meaning we're now down to eight men with one or two going at the rose ceremony. In my opinion, those men are number one for sure Dylan, and if they do send a second guy home, it might be Spencer. Unless of course something wild happens like Grant not getting a rose on his one-on-one, -on -one. but I kinda doubt that. Things then move to Seattle, where we see Jeremy getting a one-on-one, -on -one, and of course this moment from the season preview with Sam M trying to earn that hometown spot. It's Cal I love you. But why me? How can you love me when you don't really know me? But nope, thanks to sleuthing, we know that our top four is Jeremy, due to you viewers pointing out the Stu Leonard's in Connecticut, Jeremy's hometown, Jonathan, due to this shot, and these endgame shots of Marcus and Devin, plus this shot with Devin and Jen in Hawaii, the final filming location. From there, things get trickier, but I believe these two shots put Devin and Marcus solidly in the final three, with Jonathan rounding it out as he's got a better edit and and, in my opinion, stronger connection with Jen than Jeremy. The final three goes down to final two, which, at this point, your gut feeling is as good as mine, but based off the strong connection we've seen with Devin at this point, and the sheer amount of evidence suggesting he goes far, I'm just going to go with the odds on this one and say he is still the pick. So that's it for this preview breakdown for week 5 of The Bachelorette. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts and theories down below, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And until next time, Bachelor Fan Take out. You stand no chance. You're part of the past. I think you need to go back to the past. 